This video is a buster call. To find out more about how you can get me to do a personalized video on a topic of your choosing, head over to patreon.com slash grandlinereview and scroll down to the Admiral tier. But for now, enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be examining the primary feature of the One Piece world, Islands. As a world made up almost entirely of water with but a single continent, Islands provide us with the stage for almost every major conflict in the series thus far, and really, it's about time we acknowledge them. And just a warning, the criteria for this list is very subjective. Islands will be judged primarily based on their aesthetic appeal and livability, all according to my perspective. And unfortunately for this list, I will only be considering islands that we have explored a decent amount of. So I'm afraid Elbaf won't be here, and given that we've only seen a tiny amount of Wano at the time of this recording, that won't be here either. I'd also like to note that we are not judging islands by the arcs they appear in. We are strictly speaking of the locations themselves rather than the events that take place there. And once again, a lot of that is going to be my subjective opinion. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five best islands in One Piece. Number five, Dress Rosa. Also known as Anime Spain, Dressrosa is a naturally fortified island nation located in the New World. And this massive land immediately stands out due to its wonderfully fluid architecture inspired very obviously by Gaudi, but with a much more colorful interpretation. The use of color leads this island to look quite extravagant in city centers, but it also has a nice mixture of nature to prevent it from falling into the trap of becoming a true concrete jungle. In fact, nature is embraced to the point where a national monument named Flower Hill was created, which is a plateau of sunflowers planted by the Tontada a tribe after they were freed from slavery by the Riku dynasty 800 years ago. But despite the island's aesthetic beauty, Dressrosa isn't particularly well known as being one of the greatest places to live or visit in the modern era, as the island was under the dictatorship of Don Quixote do Flamingo, who tirelessly abused the citizens of the nation, as well as essentially destroyed the entire island in the events leading up to his defeat. So currently Dressrosa is in a bit of a rebuilding phase, and it is for that reason that Dressrosa can go no further on this list. Number four. Zo. We are going to continue proceeding strongly with an island located on the back of a millennia old elephant. So it's pretty fascinating, being known as a phantom island within the Grand Line due to the fact that it cannot be located by a log or eternal pose. This is of course because this island is technically an elephant and thus not subject to the same magnetic waves as stationary islands. Now you might be saying, come on Grand Line Review, Zo isn't an island, it's an elephant. And to that I say, Meh. Despite the fact that it is actually an elephant, somehow Zo is home to various forests, swamps, and at least one beautifully crafted city, or I guess it was until Jack arrived and messed the place up, but even in its ruined state, Zo is a glorious sight to behold, with one particular highlight being the Whale Forest, aptly named due to the giant tree shaped in absurd detail I might add, like a whale. So as you may have noticed, the island is rich in history, serving as the home of the Ming tribe for at least 1000 years. So it is a beautiful location with a strong sense of culture and practically unfindable in regards to any sort of super powerful emperors who wish to destroy you and your way of life. The only criticism I really have is that the way of life there might be a bit simple for my tastes, but hey, if that's all I've got to complain about, then we're looking at one pretty damn fine island. Well played, Zo. Well played. Number three, Water 7. Also known as Anime Venice, Water 7 is an island located in the Paradise section of the Grand Line. It is home to some of the finest shipwrights and general engineers of the One Piece world, which has led to the island being graced with a booming economy in the realm of construction over the course of many centuries. In fact, the citizens of Water 7 are responsible for the construction of the ancient weapon Pluton, the Sea Train, and the Aura Jackson, the pirate ship that delivered Gold D. Roger to Raftel. But the craftsmen of Water 7 also put their skill and expertise into the architecture and mechanics of their own city, having created a a stunning Minas Tirith style tiered city with some incredibly unique water based methods of transport. The result is a breathtaking metropolis, the likes of which won't be found anywhere else in the world. And looking at pictures of this marvelously crafted location, you would be forgiven for thinking that Water 7 is an entirely man made island. However, the great shame of Water 7 is that, much like Venice, it is perpetually sinking. So, buildings were originally constructed on a base of land, however, over time, new dwellings have had to be put on top of the original ones. But that is quite charming in its own way, but what's less charming is the Aqua Laguna, a yearly tidal wave that on the odd occasion can threaten to destroy the entire island. And sadly, that one factor is all that prevents it from being placed higher on this list. Number two, Sky Pier. 
Here we have quite a unique island, even for the One Piece world. Skypea is located in the White White Sea, which is 10,000 meters above the standard Blue Sea level. But it is composed of part Sky Island and part of a standard Earthy Island that was shot up into the sky thanks to the knock-up stream. However, because this island was able to evolve primarily in isolation from typical humanity, what has resulted over several centuries is an ancient paradise of giant forests and phenomenal ruins to explore, all with the added bonus of sky culture attached to it. The ability to swim or sail on clouds and the access to the surprisingly innovative technology of the Sky People really makes Skypea the closest thing to heaven that the One Piece world has. Otherworldly, yet familiar. The only thing that may want to make you think twice about Skypea is its sheer isolation. It has no contact with other parts of the world, not even other Sky Islands actually. And I guess this sense of isolation may even add more points in favour of this glorious island for a lot, but for me, I kind of like being connected to the rest of the world. So for now, Skypea will have to settle for number two. Number one, Fishman Island. Rounding out this list, we have the undisputed most beautiful location that has ever graced the eyes of One Piece fans, Fishman Island. This underwater paradise resides 10,000 meters below the blue sea level and directly under the red line, which is rather convenient because it allows it to receive natural light via the roots of the sunlight tree Eve. In addition, the island is encased in a giant bubble, allowing for human or really just non-Fishman visitors to breathe. Fishman Island really does encompass almost every positive aspect of the islands I've gone over so far. It has stunning architecture, a vibrant culture and an incredible level of natural beauty through all of the giant coral and locations such as the seafloor forest. I mean, I guess it does have a bit of a seedy, neglected underbelly in regards to the Fishman District, but I can get past that. One pretty big selling feature of Fishman Island would also be its permanent weather. Being encased in a bubble underwater means that weather will remain constant, which means, hey, we can just chill out at Mermaid Cove all day, every day. But yeah, this island is just magnificent. Certainly my favorite, and that's why it finds its way to the glorious number one spot. And that pretty much does it for the top five best islands in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way keen on supporting this independent channel, then please do check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with your own favorite islands. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.